The following may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. The Trinidad and Tobago Police Service is seeking the urgent assistance of the public in locating 15-year-old Sierra Logan of Laventil. Sierra was last seen around 5.30 a.m. on Friday, 15th of October, 2021, and was reported missing on Saturday, 16th of October, 2021. Sierra is of African descent with a slim build, five feet tall, brown complexion with braided hairstyle. She was last seen wearing a tank top and short blue jeans. Anyone with information on the whereabouts of Sierra Logan is asked to call the Morvan Police Station at 624-3737 or 555-999-911-800 tips or report via the TTPS app. Office Assistant 25-year-old Maria Kathleen Smith is missing, and the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service is seeking the public's assistance in locating her. Maria, a resident of Chris Terrace West, Chaguanas, was last seen around 8 a.m. on October 15, 2021, and was reported missing later that same day. Maria is of mixed descent and approximately 5 feet 2 inches tall. She is light brown in complexion, with a medium build and long straight dark hair. Anyone with information on the whereabouts of Maria Kathleen Smith is asked to contact the Chaguanas Police Station at 665-5271 or 665-4294, Crime Stoppers at 800 tips, or contact the police at 555-999-911 or share information via the TTPS app. Dr. Saul loses bid to recuse a member of the tribunal investigating his alleged racist rant. Dr. Avanish Saul has lost a bid to challenge the decision of the medical board of TNT to not make a member of the tribunal investigating alleged racist remarks made by him recuse herself because her husband is a veteran African rights and black power movement activist. In an oral decision at the end of an emergency virtual hearing yesterday afternoon, High Court Judge Frank C. Persaud rejected an injunction application by Dr. Saad's legal team to stop the work of the disciplinary tribunal pending determination of a lawsuit over the rejected recusal move. Justice C. Persaud also denies Saul leave to pursue the judicial review lawsuit as he said it was devoid of merit, frivolous and vexatious. There is nothing to convince this court that this case has a reasonable prospect of success, he said. It was not only divisive, but destructive, Sipersad said, as he criticized Saul's legal team for seeking to have the application heard as an emergency during the weekend. Saul came under public scrutiny late last year after a voice recording of an alleged conversation between him and an employee was shared on social media. In the conversation, Saul referred to policemen as dunce, n-word, and Afro-Trinidadians as monkeys. Following the backlash, Saul publicly apologized to the woman and members of the public who were offended by his comments. The medical board wrote to Saul and informed him that several complaints had been made against him, but failed to include the original complaint forms as required. My patients and the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago who are the lifeblood of my professional career. I wish to apologize unreservedly for, to you for my crude and careless comments. Your wide and varied ethnic and social makeup are indeed a living testament to the fact that the comments which fell from my lips do not represent the manner in which I conduct myself. The board withdrew its initial correspondence and on February 10 decided to hold an inquiry into the allegations that Saul was guilty of two charges of infamous and disgraceful conduct. On August 24, Saul's lawyers wrote to the board calling for the recusal of a veteran attorney on the basis that her husband is a prominent and leading Afrocentric rights and repatriations advocate. Almost two weeks later, the tribunal rejected the objection 
leading to the lawsuit before Seaprasad. Presenting submissions on behalf of the board, attorney Rajiv Prasad accepted that the attorney would have had to recuse herself if her husband was part of the group that made the complaints against Saul or if he had commented on the case in the public domain. However, he noted that neither occurred. Prasad also pointed out that extensive information about the activism background of the attorney's husband, which was included in the proposed lawsuit, were not raised with the board when Saul requested the recusal and was refused. During the hearing, Seepersot pointed out that the tribunal had to consider whether Saul's apology was sufficient and not whether his comments were racist. Any right-thinking citizen living in this cosmopolitan society such as ours would take difference to or object to such comments, Seepersot said. They were inappropriate, unacceptable, have no place in our society, and must be rejected outright. The first hearing of the tribunal was scheduled for 2 p.m. yesterday, but had to be postponed as the application before Seepersod was heard around 3.30 p.m. Gary Griffith's attorney says Prime Minister's remarks regarding his client are unfair. One of the attorneys representing former police commissioner Gary Griffith has responded to reports made by the Prime Minister that a letter was sent to the Police Service Commission detailing a loss of confidence in Griffith. During a media conference at the Diplomatic Centre St. Anne's on Saturday, Dr. Rowley admitted that he wrote a letter to the PSC in which he expressed a loss of confidence in Griffith as police commissioner. Rowley declined to provide further details on what led to his discontent. When contacted, Larry Lala, one of Griffith's attorneys, did not want to comment until he saw the contents of the letter, but said the remarks made by Rowley were unfair and tarnished the reputation of his client. It is very unfair to Mr. Griffith for the Prime Minister to make a comment like that, which obviously impugns the character of Mr. Griffith in the eyes of the national community, without informing the national community in what context he wrote the Police Service Commission and whether Mr. Griffith had any opportunity to defend himself in relation to those comments. He's being very unfair to Mr. Griffith. Roman Catholic priest says all are welcome. The Roman Catholic Church has welcomed an increase in worshippers since restrictions on religious gatherings were lifted just over a month ago. People got reacquainted, they got accustomed to the system, and people are now adjusting to kind of a new normal, how to enter, how to register, and how to manage the sacramental work of the Church, said Vicar for Communications, Father Robert Christo. He said the church views the uptake in worshippers as very encouraging and added that all worshippers are welcomed at church regardless of vaccination status. We continue to be all-inclusive church for all, respecting people's rights at all levels, he said. All are welcomed, including those who are vaccinated, unvaccinated, on the way to vaccination or on the fence. Everybody is welcomed. It's just that we have a minor requirement at this time to those who are frontline to protect all parties. Father Christo said the vaccination requirement was for key church officials who are in frequent contact with worshippers to help minimize the risk of transmission. He said this was based on advice from public health officials and is under continuous review by the church's Health, Safety and Environment Department. The only requirements which apply to worshippers are those set out by the Ministry of Health for Religious Services. That includes mask wearing and social distancing. At yesterday's COVID-19 media briefing, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley announced that church services can now be conducted for 90 minutes but must remain at 25% capacity. <laughs> 